I want to comment on Nick Fuentes and his appearance on Fresh and Fit. It was brilliant. Excellent performance. And at the after party, most importantly, this is what I'll comment on. Um, he was put with a circle of seven black women <laughs> by Fresh and Fit uh, to hear, uh, you know, to, to make the whole classic. Here's this little white boy, racist white boy, and he's going to he's going to lay out his racist belief, and we're going to get these black women to be offended. It was a a, a fresh and fit setup uh, to that direction, but it it turned out actually very good for Nick Fuentes because ultimately. Uh, Nick Fuentes has said things that I cannot even repeat here that would be in contradiction with Canadian law. Like, he's went far. He's went very far. And yet, he wasn't the most racist in this podcast. Like, someone who truly would look at this strictly from an anti-racist perspective would have to accept, all right, well, you know, here's this guy who's never had a girlfriend. And was saying, yeah, I will have one girlfriend in my life. It's going to be my wife. And yeah, I'm going to choose a white person because it's my only choice. Uh, you know, I don't get to explore. Uh, I get only one shot uh, at a good Catholic marriage. And I would like my children to be white like me. Uh, that is argument. Whereas you have actually in, in the group of black women around him, actually bigoted black women. Who, uh, who, 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 one of them even said at some point, uh, white people are, they exist because, because God had a, uh, a comedic, uh, he had a comedic personality. Basically, white people are a joke that God, <laughs> that God put on the earth. Uh, like, you have to be highly bigoted to think even that something saying something like this is funny. Because if, if white people were a joke, it's a joke that turned out pretty clever, you know? It's a joke that turned out to hit at something that the world needed a lot, uh, given all of our contributions to the world. And, and these black women were absolutely deluded, by the way. They... They were like, oh, yeah, everything you got is because of black people. And it's like, okay, well, in what sense? So she goes, uh, well, first, white people come from black people. Okay, so you're going to argue that the, the common ancestor of humanity was more black clothes, and therefore everything that white people come up with ultimately stems down from black people. Uh, it's like, uh, first, it's an assumption. Second, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the common ancestor had to be more black looking. Uh, and it takes a lot for granted. But even then, uh, the question is not so much whether white people are a subset of the descendants of black people or whether you would want to conceive of it. Uh, if if I told you the, the penguins are descendants of the dinosaurs, does it mean the dinosaurs have found a way to, you, you know, they have developed a reptilian life inside uh, Antarctica. They, they have developed a, a reptilian way to survive in the extreme cold. Uh, you, you can argue like this in some form. That yes, the penguins are basically dinosaurs who have adapted to uh, to the Arctic and the Antarctica uh, climate. But it is anyone anyone who would distinguish between penguins and dinosaurs, anyone who would want to initiate a discussion about is the dinosaur or the penguin better at living in these extreme climates, it would be clear what they mean. They would mean even if you consider the penguin as a subset of dinosaurs, the question is still this, this particular subset of dinosaurs or the whole rest of the dinosaurs? Who's better to live in Antarctica? And the answer would be penguins. 
all of this to say uh, white people may be a product of some ancestor that may have been black. Uh, very possible. That for, First, that doesn't make this common ancestor similar to the current blacks of Africa. The current blacks of Africa are as much a derived evolutionary product of these initial black people than white people are, than Asian people are. So in other words, we're all faced from a common ancestor. We are all faced with exactly the same amount of time that we've spent evolving in a direction. And it's not because the common ancestor would be black that it would mean that they share similarities with the blacks of today. Uh, I made a joke about Nick's appearance and people got pissed off. They started sending me insults. It was really a joke. Uh, anyone who anyone who interprets this as not a joke and uh, I'm trying to start a war against Nick. It's like you you don't know me. You don't uh, you don't understand my writing probably because you've not been following my speech and my my shows. I said you either adopt JF's yellow temptation strategy or you live long enough to become Nick Fuentes. Which way, mod which way, Western men? Uh <laughs> because people were playing with this biased screenshot were taken out of context. <clears throat> and if you've not watched the podcast, it would look like Nick is actually sexually attracted to the boobs of maybe a trans black man. <laughs> and, and just this screenshot was making the rounds, and I thought uh, that, is, that, is a, uh, that is a very interesting screenshot in terms of showing something deceptive. Because, of course, if you watch the podcast, you'll realize he wasn't obsessed with this person. First, this person... Uh, isn't trans. It's just a regular black woman, as far as I can tell from her speech. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the screenshot is kind of taken at a, a bizarre moment where the, the eyes of Nick happen to be, uh, to be in that direction, but the reality is he's probably looking more uh, at the cops or something like this, and he's just listening to her. Uh, <laughs> so so, of course, it was a joke, a joke of <coughs> publishing misleading content. And there was a very uh, funny girl here. Uh, this girl is the only black woman on this whole panel of seven black women, or, or eight, yeah, seven. She is the only one who's not dating a black guy, and she's dating a Jewish guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see that she is more uh, clean in her uh, dressing. She is a graduate student, so maybe a MSc or PhD, I don't know. So she's made it into the academia. She has her Jewish husband who will guarantee her ins into, uh, I guess, the academic world, the financial world, whatever. And she was speaking so elevated compared to a lot of these low-level hoes. Uh, it was uh, fascinating. Because you can also see that she's paler. Uh, there is a couple on that panel who are half black, uh, half Hispanic, half white, some of them. And you could see, you could see basically, uh, you could see the admixture, the, the continuum of admixture. You could see that there were some of these people were true black of sub-Saharan African descent. You could see that some of them had been mixed with Europeans. You could see that one of them was sleeping with a Jew and speaking in a kind of higher culture uh, place, although she wasn't particularly intelligent. She was uh, simply, she, she, she was capable of putting a lot of makeup on her sentences. Uh, and you, you can see how this girl makes it into academia, not being challenged too much. People saying, oh, well, she can kind of sound okay. Like, she, she's not, uh, 
she's not using the word bitch every two sentences, and so maybe maybe she's intelligent. Uh, but when it came to all of the talks, the, the most important part of the talk was about genetics and is it ultimately the difference between races, black and white, in the U.S.? Is it genetic? And Nick totally owned them. Uh, he came and they, they were always laying out these regular talking points from like 10 years ago that, that, that we've been debunked, debunking for, for a decade now. They were coming up with, oh, well, it's culture, you know, it's uh, the father and... You know, we didn't get a chance, and there, there's the oppression, intergenerational oppression. And Nick just totally went like with a lawnmower through this field of grass. And he was like, he just, he merely asserted, no, well, he said, no, uh, I don't believe, I believe that it's genetic. And, and if you look at the people who have been researching in this, uh, it, it's pretty much consensual that uh, IQ is genetically determined, mostly genetically determined, and in fact, more genetically determined than pretty much any other cognitive measure we have of humanity. And it, it totally threw them under the floor. He didn't have to talk twin studies and details. Uh, he, he just had to assert, uh, and they didn't know what to say about this other than just fighting back with their own assertion. And eventually they, there were some facts uh, that, that, that were the crux of an important argument uh, about immigrants. Black immigrants are actually doing better than descendants of slaves in the U.S. And, and uh, Nick perfectly laid this out. He said... If, if it was about racism, if it was about people judge your skin color, <clears throat> the black immigrants wouldn't be doing so good. They would be punished by the same amount of racism as anyone else with their skin color. And so uh, that, that is a beautiful illustration that once you pass through the modern immigration selection system, you will end up being a little richer, a little more high, high IQ, a little more educated because you came in on a visa. So the system will end up selecting slightly higher IQ people. And we can see that, therefore, it's not racism that keeps people down in America. <clears throat> uh, there were some super edgy comments by Nick. Uh, it was very comedic. I cannot repeat those edgy comments. They would be illegal in Canada, but it made me laugh. Uh, I laughed my ass off at the beginning. <laughs> the way he, he did, uh, I can't even explain it. It was fun. Uh, what else uh, did I have to say? Um, yeah, that is it. And then they moved on to a dating place, to a dating conversation. where, And this is where Fresh and Fit, you know, are our unfit intellectual carriers. The discussion got into, oh, well, uh, uh, that's kind of hypocritical. You're bringing your man at the club. Uh, he, he doesn't want you to go at the club. You want to go at the club, but you don't want your man to go at the club. I don't want my man to go at the club. I, uh, I'm a... <laughs> it was so low IQ, kind of black talking points about the club, the club. Nick handled this part perfectly. He stayed silent for basically an hour. And when they were trying to get anything from him, he said, just don't go at the club. Nothing's gonna, nothing good's gonna happen at the club. <laughs> because they were like, oh, well, it's hypocritical. You, you don't want your, your man to be at the club, but you want to go at the club. Now you're going to get fucked by some other guy. It was uh, cringe, cringe. And the right response to this is don't go at the club. And Nick perfectly had it. So 10 out of 10 for the performance of Nick Frontes here. <laughs>